In section one, we'll focus on the two main guides to the medical interview, the main objectives or tasks, the four E's or the E4 approach, plus that additional E. Then the five main steps or stages, the CLASS class approach. So let's start with the four E's, the E4. The first E stands for engaging the patient. And engaging really means making contact between you, the clinician, and the patient. In the paper referenced here, this task is considered under three headings. Join the patient, elicit the agenda and the story, and then setting the agenda. Joining the patient has to do with warmth and welcome, introductions, adapting your language to meet the patient's. We'll talk about some of the practical guidelines and steps in a few moments. In eliciting the agenda and the story, one of the most important features is allowing the patient to talk uninterrupted. The classic paper that you see referenced here shows that doctors tend to interrupt patients after an average of 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Whereas if you leave the patient to talk, they will only talk for a maximum of about two minutes. Hence, the first two minutes really are crucial. And not interrupting is a key technique in facilitating the interview. We'll be demonstrating that later on. Good to see you again, Mr. Thompson. So how are things going along? So Mrs. Parker, um, tell me how things have uh, been for you just lately. Steve, how have things been over the last uh, couple of weeks since we saw you last? Well, not a big change. Things have been getting a little worse over the last few months. Now, on to the most important part of being an effective communicator, and the most important part of being an effective listener, empathy. In fact, you'd almost say that this entire CD-ROM set is centered around responding empathically, showing empathy, and the relatively straightforward techniques that you need to do that. Most of us in our professional training have not had any formal education in the handling of patients' emotions, whereas, by contrast, we've had lots of training in diagnostic tests. Yet, although most of us are unfamiliar with dealing with emotions, it is actually a matter simply of learning some techniques. In other words, emotion handling is not an intuitive, God-given gift. It is a learned skill that consists of techniques. We'll be showing you the details of those techniques later on in the CLASS system. I, I do appreciate that not knowing exactly what the future holds is extremely unpleasant for you. Yeah, it's kind of tough. It, it is kind of tough, and many people find that the toughest bit, right. actually, is, is not knowing, you know, do I prepare myself for being yeah. seriously disabled, or do I say, oh, this will all be over in right. a couple of months? That's never happened before, Doctor. That must have been very upsetting. Oh, I, I had no idea where I was or where I was going. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's a big part of it. It's, yeah. it's kind of been snowballing lately. Um, you know, that was breaking down along with me uh, getting fed up with school and not doing that well. And uh, I was just, it was one thing led to the other. I was considering dropping out of school. And my girlfriend was, she couldn't handle it anymore the way I've become. And mm. it kind of all came together at once. This sounds very tough. I'm just going to ask you some questions. The third E is for educating the patient. We all know that in as many as 50% of cases, the patient will not follow medical recommendations or treatments. And part of the reason for that is that the patient may have a particular view of his or her situation, including the possibility that they may not recognize the fact that anything is wrong. Hence, educating the patient is very important. And in order to do that, you have to get a feeling of the patient's expectations and to use several techniques, which you'll see in action later on, in order to form an agreed plan of action or strategy. So those are the main tasks, the four E's, the E4 approach, and that additional E, the patient's expectations. Now, let's talk about the techniques that you need to perform those tasks. And for that, the acronym that is easiest to remember, particularly when an interview is tense or emotionally charged or awkward, is the CLASS, the class approach. You might say that what you need in a difficult medical interview is a touch of class or even a class act. The C of class stands for context, 
meaning the physical context or the setting of the interview. There are really three major components to getting the setting right. The first is arranging the space around you optimally. The second is to make sure the patient is seated nearest to you and any friend or relative is close to them. And the third component is to get your own body language and your own eye contact right. So the first component of context is the way you arrange the physical space around you and between you and the patient and any family members or friends present. Actually, quite a lot of work has been done on the influence of space on communication. It's sometimes called proxemics. So let's start with a few practical pointers to creating an optimal context, good proxemics, in your office. Here's how you can send messages in, in an ordinary office setting without fully realising it. Here's an ordinary desk. It's actually quite a nice desk. From my point of view, it's lovely. I've got the computer, I've got the keyboard, my books, blotter, telephone, pens and stuff like that. I feel all rather nicely protected and it feels very comfortable from my point of view. But it's entirely different when I'm trying to talk to a patient. From the point of view of the patient, what is nice and protective from my point of view is actually a wall to her. It's a barrier to ac active, interactive communication between the two of us. And here is how you can change the atmosphere so that it's much more easy and welcoming, very simply. Not only validates or legitimizes the emotion as a response that the patient has, it also validates or legitimizes the emotion as an item on the agenda between the two of you. It actually says to the patient, we can talk about your feelings, not merely about the medical situation, not merely about the prognosis or the treatment. If the patient has a strong emotional reaction, then that form of validating with an empathic response is very important. Now, in addition to the empathic response, there's another communication skill which is most often used as an acknowledgement technique or as a facilitation technique, but which actually can be used at almost any significant point during the interview, and that is touch. Touch is, of course, a primary person-to-person -person contact. As such, it can be very valuable in reducing feelings of isolation and in helping the patient feel supported. However, not all clinicians are comfortable doing it. Also, not all patients appreciate being touched or like it. In general terms, touch can be a very valuable communication skill, providing two simple rules are followed. First, if you touch the patient, touch the patient briefly on a neutral area of the body. That really means the hand or the forearm. Secondly, touch the patient briefly and see if they appreciate it or if they withdraw. If they withdraw, then don't try it again. Many patients, however, do appreciate being touched. And if they do, then in those cases, touch is a very useful part of your communication skills. So touch can be a very useful part of acknowledging and empathizing, as well as being useful in other parts of the interview. Now, there are a few other general points we need to make about the empathic response. First of all, about a technique called normalizing, which often works very well after acknowledging. Second, that acknowledgement doesn't mean you agree with what the patient says. And finally, that you can use an empathic response on your own emotions, and it may be helpful in de-escalating potential conflict. So let's deal with all of those three points now. First, you may well find after acknowledging the emotion that you can normalize, meaning that you can tell the patient that their reaction or response is appropriate and normal. In other words, that other people would feel the same. After acknowledgement, normalizing is often helpful. 